There's always snow somewhere. There's always snow somewhere. You don't know if there's some place in Moscow where I can go skiing? Good price. Stalin has more value than Lenin. Jesus, it's as cold as in Russia here. Oh yeah, well now, now it fits. Uh -huh. Oh, you speak good English. Yeah. And now we get to Boris Yeltsin. Yeah. And if we look over here, we see there's all these pins. The Russians invented pins. Can't do it. Not allowed. Everything in Russia is not allowed. Cameras, not allowed. Movie cameras, not allowed. Vodka is allowed. That's the same as before. I think if you take pictures of that bus over there, they'll stop you from filming because they'll be afraid you're taking military secrets from them. Hey, excuse me, you speak some English? Hello. Uh, are, are you a skier? Uh, no. <laughs> you know this, uh, you know this uh, ski area, Krasnaya Poljana? Ah, Krasnaya Poljana, yes. Krasnaya Poljana. Krasnaya Poljana. Goom's shopping center is perhaps the chicest, most elegant shopping center in the world. It's every top name in the business, you know, from Gucci's to Cartier, are all represented. Nowadays, um, Moscow is not really a place for a ski bum. It's become one of the most expensive cities in the world. I've got to get in and out of here quickly and get down to the ski resorts. You go to the subways of New York, the best of uh, the artwork there is gangland graffiti. But if you come to the subway in Moscow, it looks like a museum of fine, fine art. You know, here we are at the uh, station in uh, below Red Square, and it's absolutely stunning, all the statues and uh, the artwork, the marble. Beautiful place. Maybe if I walk in backwards, people will think I'm walking out, and I can score some free food before they get wise to my trick. Can I, can I finish my tomato cheese? Swiss air, British air, Lufthansa, thin air, SAS, United Airlines. What about my student card? Student discount. We're flying to Sochi. I should have drank a little more tomato juice before I got stopped, but otherwise, I've got a little food. We flew from Moscow to the Black Sea Beach Resort of Sochi, a finalist to host the Winter Olympics in 2014. From there, we drove 45 minutes to the ski resort of Krasnaya Pogana. This is really a country road. But the thing that amazes me about this road is that on a road like this where you can't possibly go fast, they have these speed bumps. Like, do you think they really need speed bumps here? We rented a simple accommodation here from a local family. Today, some of the locals earn their small part from the tourism that surrounds the ski resort. 
But will the Olympics change all that? I wonder. This location is meant to be the venue for the Alpine events if Sochi wins the bid for the Olympics. We don't know that yet. We'll find out this summer. So by the time this TV program is on, you will know whether Sochi won the bid against Salzburg. a warm and snow poor winter when global warming has been a theme on almost every skier's lips, Krasnaya is one of the few ski areas that has received enough natural snow. Look at the amount of snow we have here in Krasnaya Polyana. Three and a half meters. This is incredible and it's, it's all natural. Hey, excuse me. Hello? Is Mr. Putin home? Do you hear me? Is, is Vlad home? Okay. Ask if he'd like to ski a little powder in the trees with us. What? Oh, he's still having breakfast. Okay, well, he's a late riser. We'll be, we'll, we can be back at noon. Okay, tell him we meet him at noon. Vodka, please. So this is shashlik. A couple different sauces you can have it with. Got the onions. Vodka goes with every Russian meal. It's great. Woo! And here's something typical Russian as well. Caviar. This is an awesome view. You can see all the way to the Black Sea, which is shimmering golden in the sun. We're here on top of the mountain of Krasnaya Polyana, which is 2,238 meters high. The village down below the base of the lifts is 550 meters high. That means you have almost 1,700 vertical meters of skiing. This location is one of the best areas in the world for free riding. The Russians have really been taking to free riding and now you go into these uh, thick forests which are beautiful for uh, powder skiing in the trees and they're full of tracks, Russian tracks. So the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. Okay, I understand it. Everything. <laughs> you said the powder looks good, let's go for it. <laughs> can do their big wide free ride turns but I'm an old guy and I stick with the old school nice short turns get many more turns in the powder than these guys do more turns for my money that's the old school This is, 
this is the first time, you're 40 years old, and this is the first time you've left the business world for an entire winter, and you're trying ski bombing. That's it. And after that, you're gonna see what your next step is gonna be. Yeah. You, may, you may never go back to the corporate world. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm so comfortable now. It's just amazing. I'm not in a hurry. I don't hurry for the first lift. I don't hurry, you know, for the last lift. I've got, you know, 90 or 100 days of skiing here. And I'm taking my time. That's the kind of philosophy uh, I go for. Ski bum usually hitchhikes instead of taking a taxi. But in Russia, that's not always the easiest procedure. The common practice in Russia is that hitchhikers pay for their ride. So, here we are in our black taxi, an old Lada, and we've broken down on the road. What to do, I have no idea. Probably going to have to start walking. It's about what you'd expect from an old Lada. They're very sexy. These these high heels are very sexy. <laughs> Show me, can you move with those high heels? <laughs> she got legs right Do up to Do we have a little neck. dance? She's making me a physical wreck. I'm talking to you. Hot legs like an alley cat. Hot legs make me scream and shout. Hot legs, I love you, honey. So we're on a main promenade here that goes from the art museum down towards the Lenin statue and everything's been prepared for the Olympic Committee who's coming to visit very shortly and uh, make its decision about where the Olympics will be. Vladimir is looking out over all this and I bet he's shaking his head and thinking what the hell happened to my world? I built this up so nicely, and now it's all come to nothing. Capitalism. People who look to the past look up at the statue of Lenin. People who look to the future look to the Olympics of 2014. Yeah, this is real bamboo. Imagine a city with bamboo, palm trees, citrus trees. Everything is green. It's at sea level, and it's going to hold the Winter Olympics. This is, I'm too <laughs> old to get in now. The cement van, just oozing on down. Well, that cement is there. It's there for the weight, babe. I will get you 10 old Mackies back in town. So I wonder what these guys are doing here. These are from the Red Sea. As, as I recall, this is the Black Sea. And it keeps it. They're kind of cute little fellows. Has old Mackie been? And it keeps it out of sight. I hate these Asian style toilets. I have to strip off all my clothes to make sure I don't soil them. And that's not easy when one is dressed in ski gear. This is a harder job than skiing the trees, for sure. My, 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 what a wonderful day. Wonderful feeling. Отличные горки. Look at this amazing view here. You have this huge bowl about half the size of Alaska that you can 
go down anywhere, hiking a little bit along the rim and finding a place uh, between the snow cornices to drop in. Over this way, you have the Black Sea in view. And over here, we've got Heliski territory, which is also amazing, but you can hike into the Heliski territory with only about a 20 minute hike. And all these tracks that you see down here, almost all of them are done by, uh, by heliskiers, but we're gonna drop in here and, uh, and poach some heli powder. interesting show. We've got a couple drunken snow cat drivers who've been having a little too much vodka and they're putting on a show with the snow cats. Simple as that. rather expensive restaurant, but I think I know how we can get a ski bum meal out of here anyway. Do you think this would work as a little uh, harpoon? What do you think about the other man, Palana? Beautiful. Yes, sir. What do you think? This is good. This is good. This is good. Is this your car? Pretty nice car. It's not really a ski bump car. <laughs> I have to admit. While we've been here, we've asked various local people their opinion about whether they want the Olympics to come here or not. And usually the answer has been no, they prefer them not to come. And yet when we ask them to give their statement on tape, no, you now, why didn't he answer the way, we, the way he answered yeah, before? Cut, 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 cut. Because I mean, it was good the way he answered. He's afraid? And right. say, KG, okay, KGB's, got, <laughs> KGB's got it with this tree wired. Yeah, we were coming to Sparta, we were coming to Sparta, okay. I don't want Olympics here. <laughs> kind of fear that existed in the old days of the KGB and uh, the Politburo, the Communist Party, and the dictatorship seem to still be around somehow in these new days of the oligarchs and the mafia. Anybody home? And I wonder what the future of this village is going to be. Will they get the Winter Olympics? How quick will the progress go? And where will the money, where will the profit from all the new building, regardless of whether they get the Olympics or not, in whose pockets will that go? Will it go to one or two oligarchs? Or will the local people see any benefit from the progress and the build-up that comes to Krasnaya Poliana? 
as it grows into an international ski resort? Or will they be forced to move away? Will their land be bought up to make this a shiny, glittery ski resort with just the oligarchs and the 1% of the wealthy in Russia and internationally will be able to enjoy? This area has already changed a lot and I would like it to maintain some of the uniqueness, the character that it now has. I've been to many ski resorts in the world and I've seen some of them grow from small locals areas where they had a charm and a uniqueness into just another one of the typical resorts that represent the multi-billion dollar ski industry with glitz and glamour. And I hope that doesn't happen here to Krasnaya Polyana. I'd like to come back here in 20 years and still see kind local people that live here now still in place. And I hope I can still find some fresh lines in the trees.